What's going on guys, T2RX6 here back for another third party review and today we're taking a look at the MMC Ocular Max Perfection Series. Uh, this is Kojin uh, and he comes with his little Target Master Night Beam. Uh, I think, I'm, I hope I'm saying Kojin right, I'm not really sure. Um, I don't know, Kojin! Uh, Art Fire basically. Um, so it's their take on Art Fire which is the uh, Inferno mode. Uh, it was a Kickstarter type thing. Uh, they ran it on their own site. And uh, yeah, it got successfully funded and uh, here it is. It finally arrived today. So I'm pretty excited to show you guys this. So let's talk about the Target Master. Um, you get the little Night Beam Target Master. Now I went ahead and took his legs off and I flipped them the other way. Um, because if you look at the way they're molded on the side here, um, the instructions actually tell you to transform them. You flip the legs up like this, but let me just show you real quick. If these are on the wrong leg, or the way they come out of the box, uh, you can't bend it upwards properly. Like you can, you can move it around and get it, but see how it's kind of like stressing the plastic a little there? Um, it might be hard to see because Kojin's in the background. See that? So what I recommend you do is the first time you get it, kind of manipulate it and just kind of peel it back off the ball joint and flip this around. Now mine also, these legs were real loose, um, so I put a little bit of clear nail polish on here just to tighten them up here. And then there's a bunch of places that I actually ended up putting a little lubrication on uh, because they were too tight. So be careful with yours if you do get this guy. Obviously the only paint detail is on the face there. I do feel like it's a little bit lacking. It could be a little bit better, uh, but it's not bad. Also, even though we didn't make the stretch goal, they did give us the clear night beam, um, which is in its own separate box. Well, it's inside the box in its own box. Uh, and I think that's pretty awesome, especially since Art Fire does have two Target Masters. I do like having uh, two of this night beam. And he suffers from the tight part problem but he doesn't suffer from um, the the loose hips but you still had to switch them around otherwise you can't bring them up um, so just be aware of that and also since it is clear plastic if anything does seem hard to manipulate I would highly recommend putting some clear nail polish or not clear nail polish some lubricant on there uh, so you can move it around a little more freely so we don't snap any of the clear stuff because clear is very very fragile so keep that in mind so let's talk about the Target Master. I'm only going to transform this one. Um, again, I've done it with this one, but I just, I don't know. I just kind of don't want to transform this one and just transform this. Uh, the transformation on this guy is pretty simple. The instructions tell you to flip this up like this. And I believe you can lock these together just like so. Um, actually, no, you can't. I'm sorry, because you have to flip the legs around so... The shin is at the top, so I really don't understand why that lock-in piece is here. And then you take this heel spur, and it's actually the whole foot, and you kind of move it in there. And what's going to happen is the foot's going to pop out of here. And this is something I don't like because this is real tight to fit in here. Like, this is not going to fall out because of the friction on there. Um, I'm not going to modify mine. I did put a little bit of lubrication on the inside. You can see it's kind of on here. Um... Yeah, so I, I wish it wasn't like that, but just try to get it in there the best you can. And, I mean, at some point, if it pops off, it's going to be stuck in there by friction anyway. So it really doesn't matter too much. But anyway, you want to leave those feet flat. Now we're going to take the back of the gun here, fold this open, and get the handle out. Push the head down like so. Rotate these arms upwards. Now take them and rotate them forward. Uh, be careful, these elbow joints are very stiff on mine. Take this piece, rotate the little gun barrel forward and rotate the legs upwards and then the bottom of the foot has a little hole there. It goes right into this tab here. You plug it in like this and just kinda work out the barrel of the gun the best you can. And he does have, I forgot to mention, he does have like an ab crunch here. Doesn't look very good. Um, and it will kind of play havoc on the actual gun mode a little. Because you kind of always have to fight that ab. And then this barrel, it just, it never is quite uh, angled straight. And I don't know if it's supposed to be that way or if it's just mine. 
but I fight it a little bit. So there we go, we got the other side done. Like so. And then you take the gun piece on the front here, and it's supposed to peg into the crotch so you can see when it's not really working right. Um, it ends up being a little difficult to peg in. But it does hold, it's just not a very super secure connection. Just like that. And then the handle comes down like this. And there's the gun mode. And the clear one is virtually the same. I will transform it, but I'll do it off camera just so you guys can uh, see it when we actually go to Artfire. Because I feel like you should have them both. That said, I don't know if I'll necessarily use these guys. I might end up using the uh, mini cons from the uh, Takara Artfire. The um, Million Publishing one just because I think they'll be a little more durable than this. So if you're like me and you may not use your mini cons, you do end up getting in the package a gun uh, that does extend out here. It has the blue paint on it. Other than that, it's pretty plain and straightforward. Uh, it can store in his alt mode, just like it could in the rest, but I don't have it there. Um, you get the alternate uh, grapple style head, uh, if you prefer that. I like the uh, Inferno style head for Art Fire. And one thing you'll notice is that the wings that are on this guy are kind of ridiculously long. Um, they kind of look more like angel wings, and then these are kind of more your traditional inferno wings. Um, so if you don't like how long they are, uh, you simply have to take off the screw and screw in these new ones. So let's talk about Kojin himself. I want to say that I've transformed this to robot mode, and I've transformed it back, and I gotta say... This is the best version of this mold that I've dealt with. Uh, everything pegged in. The only thing that's a problem is kind of these side panels. And even then, they're kind of fairly close to being all the way pegged in. Um, it doesn't really get too much better than that. It could be just a little bit more. But, I mean, on both sides, everything is pegged in. Uh, for comparison, my grapple is kind of a mess. Like, I can't make it any better than this. I've tried numerous times and it just it constantly wants to fight me like I can get one side pegged in and then the other unpegs and then I try to peg that in and uh, yeah it's just it's constantly fighting me. Um, I don't I don't hate the mold for it it's just it is troublesome and I do remember when I took a look at Robert's uh, backdraft he did kind of have some similar problems where it was hard to get everything pegged in uh, so this one just works really really well so while i do like kojin a lot he's not entirely without his flaws some of the pins here are a little bit stiff so the wheels don't really freely roll um that said i don't really roll my toys around the floor so that's okay um the back ones are a little bit better this one's a little concerning though because it doesn't actually pin in properly as you can see um, yeah, that's a little bit of a problem, but something that can be fixed. And it, yours may not have the same issue. It could just be a one of, and mine just kind of missed that in the QC check or something like that. Still have the stabilizers that pull out, um, the little hose on the side. This is the fully extended ladder. Um, it's not my favorite ladder. I don't think it necessarily looks terrible, but I like it when it goes the whole range of the truck. Uh, this is just too short to me. Um, it does have that little fake stabilizer and a can 360 around here. The doors, of course, still open as they're important for transformation, so you can get your masterpiece spike in there if you want to. Um, that type of thing is not all that important to me. And these doors are a little bit hard to get open. So for a quick comparison, once again, here's Grapple. Uh, you can see it shares a lot of the same molding, a little bit different in the truck tops here. Um, same panels going to the back, but slightly different side panels here because you accommodate the hose and stuff. And then for my Inferno, I decided to go with the Masterpiece with Repro labels just to kind of make it a little bit different. So one of the things people always seem to love is where's the die cast? Well, he's got plenty of die cast. I've got my scale in ounces here, 17.2 ounces. That's one pound, uh, one ounce. Uh, if you want a pounds measurement there, uh, for comparison, here is the Masterpiece Inferno. Uh, he clocks in at just under 11 ounces. Um, so, yeah, there's a, a good deal more heft to this guy. Uh, if you are a fan of die cast and you've never messed with this mold, 
uh, I think you'll like it a lot. Alright, so for transformation, we're only going to show it one direction. I uh, have a, another video. I think I did both the other versions if you want to see it go back the other way. Uh, so we're just going to go from vehicle, which is what he's boxed into robot mode. First we start by sliding those panels back. Uh, and then you can open these top panels and unclip the gray arm bits here from the top panel and rotate it out. That's going to pretty much free the entire leg assembly up, uh, which will virtually drop down on its own. From here, just rotate the foot, rotate these little white pieces to fill in the back, uh, collapse this down, and collapse this in, and it should form the calf basically. So, collapse it down and in. And then we'll come around to the front, we'll spin this around, open these up, and this pegs in nice and solid on this version, uh, unlike the other versions. It's, I mean, like, you can hear, you can hear how good the peg mechanism is. So we got that. And uh, I just want to point out that the fire on here, this is already pre-applied, you can't change that, uh, as are the stickers on the side. So now from here, uh, we'll go ahead and open up these side panels and I always need the mirror to help me get these doors open a little just to start it. Side panel, mirror. And now we're going to take these assemblies and slide them upwards while they're still on here. Well, slide them sideways, I should say, towards these panels that you just dropped down. And as you can see, uh, the wheel came right on off again. So I'm going to have to glue that one back in place myself. The pin at least, not the wheel. The wheel will still move. Anyway, we're going to take this and I'll put it back on after. I don't want it to distract any more of the video here. So now we're going to take this and rotate it sideways here. Both sides. Everything has to be down so you can clear. And the head comes out and it does click in very securely. From here, you can rotate this up so you can close the door. Uh, I already inadvertently did it on this side. And then get the arm out of the way and bring up these back panels on both sides. From here, rotate the arm this way. Fold it on down. You should see that the, the chrome piece stays up. And fold that chrome piece up. So rotate it, rotate it down, flip the chrome piece up, and uh, just flip it so we have the proper spaced elbows. And you see he still has these things. If you do want to, you can, whoops, let me do it on this one. I actually put a little bit of uh, clear nail polish on this one because when it was fully extended, it was just... Well, you can fully extend it. I don't like it that way. I like it this way, so I put a little clear nail polish in here uh, just so it would stay like that instead of moving around. And uh, now it's stuck in there, but we'll get it out later. I'm not concerned about that because actually I'm going to display my art fire with two hands to differentiate him even more. So you just flip these panels down and flip the hands around, and then you just clean up the hands afterwards. I'll do one here, and the next one will get off camera. There we go. And you can see individual uh, articulation on all the fingers. Um, not like at every point of articulation, but you can move them separate. To the back here, we take the silver bits and once again they are die cast. You fold them down. This whole thing kind of folds up. And now we just kind of work with this assembly. So take these wings and you can see just how massive they really are like this and it always takes me a second to figure out the direction I need to rotate parts to get everything to kind of operate the way that looks right there we go nope still not the right way there we go Always a little bit of a, a puzzle. So, to kind of show it again, 
bring it down and around like this that'll let you flip everything up and we're almost done now we're gonna take the ladder um, slide it forward on this joint uh, and you can do it just by grabbing putting it sideways and pushing it forward you can see you can see that back piece now rotate the ladder actually no you can do it this way and rotate this down and once you're at the 90 degrees that's when you can go ahead and fix the ladder and uh, push it forward because what that's gonna let us do is bring this whole ladder assembly down without interfering with all this back stuff like this and we can drop it down like this once that's down this part here just closes up and make sure your red pieces are all the way in the right place otherwise it will not close properly and uh, one problem with the ocular max stuff is I can never get this gap to 100% go away it's better on this version uh, it's pretty atrocious on my my grapple but this one it's okay for the most part anyway bring this up before we do that let's go ahead and bring the little I don't know what you would call these things head spicule things I don't know vents bring them down and we can bring this forward and it'll clip right in place when you have it in the right location and all this stuff should be securely fastened and now it's just a matter of kind of angling the wings however makes you happy like this and if you do want this uh, hose thing out just move one of the wings and flip it around I don't really care for that I prefer to have the clean art fire look to differentiate him more and there we go. There's our art fire in his robot mode. Let me get him cleaned up a little and we'll look at him closer. So here we have Kojin in his robot mode. As you can see, I gave him the clear target master just for comparison. Uh, I don't really feel like they hold the target masters very well. Um, the handle is not that great and they just tab in here. And I just feel like where it tabs in on this guy feels a little bit low. So it always kind of feels like he's pointing his gun slightly towards the ground um, because of how it sits. It's not the worst thing, but unless I'm doing something wrong, it's not really the best thing necessarily either. But I mean, he holds it pretty okay. Um, if you're going to use the Target Masters, I might just have him sitting next to him and use this. Or like I said, use the uh, Takara uh, Million Publishing Art Fire target masters so articulation you've already seen that on the previous ones I'm not gonna go over that uh, I am gonna point out a couple little flaws outside of our crappy wheel here um, this is a little more loose than the other ones not so much so that like nothing feels like it's just gonna flop around on you uh, but it's definitely noticeable when you mess with it um, this gap is not quite as bad as it is on my grapple I think everyone's might vary that said it doesn't really bother me because the head's still in a box and I think that's fine um, other than that I mean the rest of the joints are solid everything holds things well I don't really have any complaints about it so here's a size comparison well a comparison of art fire with grapple and Takara's inferno and clamp down here uh, overall I really like this I think MMC did a good job um, it's been solid all around, but I do think that this one does kind of alleviate the most problems, which is nice considering that it's the third use, pretty well the third use of the mold. Um, I don't really love the Target Masters uh, as much as I thought. I'll probably just keep them in their robot modes just because they're probably better there. I don't think things like this QC issue are going to be rampant. Uh, it's clearly, you know, this, this little screw something's wrong with it it didn't end up making contact right uh, I don't think everybody's gonna see that problem so I wouldn't worry about it and the again the loose waist here it's not terribly terribly loose it's just a little bit loose um, overall I think if you need an excuse to pick up the MMC uh, Inferno mold uh, I do think he's a great reason to do so uh, he's better than the other two 
he's different than this Inferno. I know they have an art fire coming, but it's frankly the same thing as this as far as I've seen. And while I like it, I don't really need two of it. So anyway, this is T2RX6. I hope you guys enjoyed the review, and I'll see you next time.